All right, this might be the last one for the night. I don't know. I'm kind of running on fumes right now. So I'm uh, going to try and get this one. We'll see if I feel up to it. If not, I'll try to return tomorrow to filming. But uh, yeah, let's get into this one. Fall 2021 AMC 10A Problem 21. 12a problem 18 i did spend a little bit of time in the beginning i thought i could use stars and bars and in fact you may be able to and i failed to execute it well um so i had to abandon that path and try a different one which ended up providing one of the actual answers and ended up being correct each of 20 balls is tossed independently and at random into one of five bins let p be the probability that some bin ends up with three, so P is gonna have a bin with three, another with five, and the other three with four balls each. So I wrote this on my paper. Then what? Q is the probability that every bin ends up with four balls, and it wants the ratio of P to Q. Okay, so Q, four, 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 and four. So again, I thought stars and bars would work. Like I said, didn't work out. So what I said next was, okay, since I can't get that to work, we gotta try a different approach. Let's say uh, I just choose how many I want to, or which ones to go in this bin. So I, I want, of the 20 balls, I wanna choose three to go here. So I'm gonna do 20 choose three. And I saw this tactic used in AOPS intro to counting and probability as well. Like I said, I just thought I could do it in a slicker fashion. So then uh, next up, if you've put three of them in this bin, then there's how many that you haven't placed yet? 17. And of those 17, you're gonna choose five to put in this bin. Okay, great. Then take away the five, there's 12 left. I will have 12 choose four for that bin and eight of the eight remaining choose four. There's only four remaining after that and they're gonna go in the last bin. Now this is not all the ways that you can have that outcome. Why? Because this is just the ways to have it where the first bin gets three, the second bin gets five. So we're gonna have to do arrangements of that scenario. You know what it's like? It's a lot like binomial probability. It's the one that we talked about before where I said, don't just memorize, understand. Again, that's not even my line. That comes from the AOPS books and a lot of teachers too. They got it from somewhere else also. And so you don't want to just memorize things like binomial probability if you understand how that concept works, right? And again, it's n choose k, case of uh, the probability of success p to the k power and one minus p to the n minus k. So this part is the probability of one situation, which is what we've got, the number of ways that one situation can happen. What's the n choose k? That's the number of ways it could occur. So for example, if it went A, A, B, N choose K would be like three choose one, where to place the B or something like that, okay? So that, we need to account for this part here where we say how many ways can we arrange those. Now, keep in mind, these P and Q are both individual probabilities, so they have a denominator. That denominator is basically all of the ways that all of the balls could be possibly arranged. And whatever it is, I think it's just five to the 20th right? Because you'd have five choices times five choices times five choices 20 times, but that's just going to cancel out, right? You're going to have like A over five to the 20th, B over five to the 20th. You cancel it, you're going to get this A over B, okay? So I just need the number of ways this can occur over the number of ways this can occur. So I'm going to multiply this times what? Well, first I've got, if I'm placing in five bins, and I wanna place these fours. Well, five choose three would be the bins, okay? So five choose three is going to be whatever it comes out to is 10, I believe, yes. Then what? Well, the three and the five, once I've placed the fours in these bins, the three and the five have to go on the other two bins, but they have two arrangements. So 10 times two is 20. So then I have to take this and multiply it by 20, which is like the arrangements mechanism that works within binomial probability. Okay, um, then what? The Q, well, that's just gonna be the same thing, but there's no arrangements to do because they're all fours. So 20 choose four, take away four, there's only 16 left, take away four, 
And you should see now that this part here is going to cancel this part here if I added the other one. So I don't. From that point on, we're just going to be simplifying. I'm going to turn this into, let's get rid of this expression here for binomial probability. And you're going to get 20 factorial over 17 factorial, 3 factorial times 17 factorial over 12 factorial, 5 factorial. Then times 20, I'm going to put that 20 in front. What am I going to do with the next part? This is in the denominator. What's it going to be? It's going to be a fraction in the denominator of 20 factorial over two things. Let's just flip it now. Save some time, right? So we'll put 20 factorial here, which is the numerator of this, but it flips when it goes to the, because it's a fraction over a fraction. You take it, you flip the other one and multiply instead. So then I'm going to have 16 factorial and 4 factorial. Let's flip this one too. The 16 factorial goes down here. There's 12 factorial, 4 factorial. Okay, let's get started in canceling this with this, this with this. 12 factorial, 12 factorial, 20 factorial, canceled the 20 factorial as well. 17 factorial, everything's getting canceled. We've got 20 times 4 factorial, 4 factorial over 3 factorial, 5 factorial. That's all that's left there. Now this works in a kind of an interesting way. When this is bigger than that by 1, you can just cancel and you'll leave the 5. The 5 is still there. Okay, uh, the four is bigger than three, you will cancel and leave the four. And so what do you get? Five goes into 20, four times, four times four. Answer choice E, it's 16. Don't be alarmed when your first attempt at a solving a problem doesn't go according to plan. For me, trying to use stars and bars and be clever because I really like that solution path. But man, it got a little frustrating for about a minute and a half, two minutes when I was solving this in my my time solve at my house where I tried them out um, and I had to switch gears and you're going to probably have to do that sometimes too. Uh, we'll see what we can film tomorrow, maybe more tonight. I don't know, but you guys have a good one.